Before we start this video, you see that white little button near the cheapy version of my face? Make sure you give that a big ol' click to subscribe. Also, please check out my Etsy called Nerdosity Creations, where I make 3D printed props and other things for your cosplay and enjoyment needs. See you back at the video! You're watching Nerdosity! What's up, Nerdosity? This is your host, Tiger Eye Cosplay, coming at you, and today I bring you another top list of Nerdosity. That's right, it's part two of our top 10 anime slice of lives. Part two is where the anime is still slice of life, that's the focal point, but the other defining features have more of a say, like 50% or less. I think in our society, the slice of lives just aren't appreciated so much, which is why I wanted to create this three-part series of the best slice of lives that you should check out because I endorse them and I'm great. <laughs> but I really do hope that the, these parts will bring to light some of the best slice of life animes and give them a fair shake and for other people to find new favorites within this list and have a new appreciation and love for slice of lives. So get ready to very much want to watch these underrated beauties. And here is my top 10 lists of anime slice of lives part two. Also be aware that the animes in this list are not in any particular order except for the top three. Those are definitely the top three. And as always, please beware for minor spoilers below and enjoy. Number one is probably one that a lot of people were confused as to why it wasn't on the first list, which is K-On. Yes, I know that this awesome anime is very much a slice of life, but since it is music based and about learning instruments, it's a little less relatable. And there is also a good bit of drama and other things, especially with the movie, uh, that I think it has to be on the list that isn't fully slice of life. So that's why. But it's still definitely worth watching because these cute girls become great friends through the power of music. <laughs> there are five main characters, by the way, two being the OG members of the Light Music Club, then two being recruited later on so the club doesn't have to disband, and then the last one being recruited when the next year rolls around and more people come in. It's a wonderful view on learning how to play instruments, uh, especially like what it takes, the effort that you have to put in to become good, and then also furthering their craft through live concerts and other things. It's really awesome, but please be aware of that these kids kind of uh, are prodigies <laughs> because I really feel like it takes a whole lot longer to learn instruments in real life than it does with these girls. And uh, you know, that's anime magic for you. But I truly loved it, it's great. Number two is a much newer anime and that is Life Lessons with Udamichi-san. Oh boy, <laughs> this anime is wild. <laughs> I put it on this list since these characters work at a TV station for a popular kids show, so it's not as relatable to everyone, like kids or non-working folk. And it is, like I said, wild. Uh, but man, are these hashtag struggles relatable. Oh my gosh, so relatable to working people, working adults. It's like a sucker punch to the gut every second with just relatable issues and it makes you question life and everything and it would make you really depressed if it didn't counter all that by being just so daggum funny <laughs> seriously the mundane that this show riffs on is the absurdity the struggles and the depression of a working adult especially in a child care setting let me tell you, as someone who has worked in a childcare setting, kids can be rough and the struggle is real. Oh my gosh, kids have absolutely no filter and they are just mean. If I ever have to work at the YMCA again, I would just much rather die. Kill me, please. But at least Odomichi finds joy in his work since the kids love him and it's actually like, they actually have to listen to him and is actually fulfilling to a degree. You just have to watch it, and I promise you, it'll hit way too close to home, but you will still be in stitches. Number three is Uzuki wants to hang out. Despite all of the misunderstandings that can be misconstrued as any windows or the second season where it turns into more of a romance, this anime does a great 
great job of just being a bit of nothing in every episode. The main character, Uzuki, basically befriends a guy, Sakurai, and hangs out with him under the guise of not wanting him to be sad and lonely because he's introverted and sad and he just should be more social in college. <laughs> Me? <laughs> okay, it's super funny and truly a slice of life in the first season before the meddling of their friends turn, starts to turn it into a slow burn romance. <laughs> Even so, all of the misunderstandings by every party involved, the very insightful and wise cafe owner, and the crazy ways Uzuki wants to hang out with Sakurai really makes this a treat to watch. Honestly, it's just about two people becoming friends and then something more every episode while just going through life. Although Uzuki can be very annoying in Sakurai's point of view and that's just so funny. It's just so funny. College life really gives you a whole lot of time to just do nothing and hang out. All right, number four is the maid I hired recently is mysterious. This show is just a very cute interaction between a young boy who just became the master of his house due to his parents dying and his new and only maid. Since the boy is still in grade school and doesn't know much about finances or food or house cleaning or how to take care of himself generally, he needed someone to just take care of his house, take care of him, take care of his place. And then a maid shows up, apropos of nothing. He was suspicious, and rightly so, since she came out of nowhere and wanted to help him despite the lack of a paycheck. And to make matters worse, she is simply immaculate when he allows her to help him, excelling at everything despite not being paid, and it weirds him out. So the whole show is him imagining elaborate reasons to why she's so amazing and why she's helping him, usually resulting in him becoming even more panicked and suspicious, but also way more intrigued by her, so he must know everything about her. It's funny, it's cute, and it's definitely worth the watch. Number five is Walt Koi. Love is hard for the otaku. <laughs> I think everyone knows about this one, but if you don't, it's about six people, two couples, and one budding romance. All otakus of varying degrees living everyday life as the otakus and working people. I believe it's mostly a slice of life because it's mostly about different things working adults and college people go through while also navigating the difficulties of love and the perceived issues against otaku in the workplace. I think there's literally a little bit of everything in this anime for everyone, despite it being labeled as love is hard for an otaku. Like, even though it's about otakus, it's for everyone. And honestly, if you're watching this YouTube video to this point, you can consider yourself an otaku and you'll love this. I'm calling you out. Number six is Restaurant to Another World. This show is literally about making amazing food in a cafe that allows sentient beings from all kinds of different worlds to enter it on Saturday and experience said amazing food. You know, amazing food of our world, because their food is bland and disgusting, apparently, according to the anime. I'm not saying it. I'm not throwing shade. So, like I said, these beings get to enjoy food from our world and how we uh, make the food, the ingredients that we use and the spices and everything like that, that just elevates the taste, which these beings aren't used to at all. They're just used to bland food that must be eaten as a necessity, you know? Even though this anime is mostly about making said food and feeding it to said sentient beings, a lot of the filler parts of the episode Parts that are in the other world are just intense and and violent and just like super dramatic and it can get bloody and stuff but like not bad like not bad enough to be like oh oh my good oh my good it's just it's implied and stuff so like it doesn't overshadow the food and the interesting slice of life aspect it's just you know not fully slice of life in that sort of way you know what I'm saying Honestly, I just like seeing the new and interesting food, and it's really fun to see the reactions to the good food and the character interactions because of it. It's sweet, it's campy, all the right feels, and you'll definitely be tempted to try some of these new foods and the recipes. All right, number seven is My Senpai is Annoying. This one is just great. A new hire at a regular Joe Schmo office gets to learn the ropes and slowly falls in love with the beefy guy who's made to be her manager. 
It's sweet, it's comedic, and the slow burn starts much later in the show because she really, really tries to fight it. The main character girl just fights it every every step of the way until she finally realizes, I like him. He's not annoying, I just like him. It's great. And there's some side stories just sprinkled up in there, like uh, some romance between two of her colleagues, the interactions between family members and friends that they get to do, other things like that, and it's just great. And it gives the show a little bit of spice too. It's definitely a slice of life, but romance does show its head a lot, but I love this one, it's so great. All right, number eight is the ice guy and his cool female colleague. Hey. Same as the one before, except you throw in two new hires who fall for each other and romance between four other colleagues. Also, a lot of them are descendants from mythical beings. It's super funny and cute, but it does focus a good bit on romance, even though most of the show is mostly about nothing. It's totally worth the watch though, because Himuro is a guy any girl would love to have. Uh, like, like, whew. He had to be made by a female because he's great. <laughs> Number nine is heroines run the show. You have a whole lot of shows about girls fangirling over boy bands and wanting to be a part of them. Maybe even getting to be the manager, you know? And and like mixing it up with the boys, right? You know, with just lots of fanfare or whatever. But then you have this show, which is like the exact opposite. The main girl character knows nothing about boy bands since she moved to the city from the country. Yes, this seems to be a running theme in Slice of Life, you know, moving from the country to the city. It's a big theme. And then she falls into a job managing a boy band duo that goes to her school because she has to get money to pay for her new life. It's a very cute story about a girl who loves track and field enough to deal with these bratty boys and get their band up and running to new height. Like she's willing to do this awful job because she wants to do track and field. It's commendable, honestly. Even though it's more slice of life than most of this list, and it could possibly be on the first list, the first part of this uh, three-part thing, uh, sometimes it was a little much or cringy, I guess. Like, I don't really know how to describe it. It's not so cringy, but a couple of parts was kind of like, yikes, you know? But I still enjoyed it enough to have it on a list, like, right? Like, it's not an honorable mention, so. Uh, yeah, I think you just have to get past the first five episodes to really, like, get to the good stuff. And I did. I sat through five episodes just to get to the good stuff. Okay, before we go on to the last one, I have two honorable mentions. Number one is the Polar Bear Cafe. This one takes this spot because even though it's strictly a show about cute animals milling around in a cute cafe doing cute animal things, it's about cute animals. So maybe it's less relatable and just completely cute. And number two is Miss Koizumi Loves Ramen. It's a super fun 12 episode anime about a girl who's obsessed with ramen and her jaunts around Japan trying many different kinds each episode. Unfortunately, there's a girl in the show that's a little crazy, psychotic, like stalkerish, obsessed, and won't take a hint, who follows Koizumi around to give us the play-by-play -play in most episodes. Honestly, she is an unnecessary character, super annoying and creepy to be honest, and kind of detracts from the show as a whole. That's why it's here. Can we please stop making these characters? And last but not least, number 10 is Comey Can't Communicate. I know what you're probably thinking. Why is this show so low on the list? Even though I said the list isn't really in any particular order besides the first three or four. And you're probably wondering why this wasn't on the first list either. Yes, it's a story about a girl just trying to get friends in high school because she's seen as unapproachable due to her immense beauty and not being able to speak because of her anxiety. And a boy breaking down those walls but just simply noticing that no, she isn't thinking that she's too good for everyone. She just can't speak because she's shy. And the subsequent slow, slow burn romance that follows it. It's incredibly cute, and I adore the manga, and I like the anime. But can I direct your focus to a certain person, Ren Yamai, who, and Ren Yamai's group that just kind of follows Ren's lead? I don't know! But when the first episode of a series has a kidnapping, physical abuse, and sexual abuse, you just, you just kind of have to think, is this a slice of life? And what did I get myself into? Thankfully, these occurrences are mostly rare, and she mellows out on the kidnapping and the physical abuse department, but it still needs to be said that she should have been arrested or expelled for, like, 
holding Tadano against his will and like having a knife pointed at him most of the time and threatening his life. And, and like the story truly doesn't need her. She's terrifying, creepy, pushes boundaries to the immense degree. And she's just against the character development of Komi as a whole because she doesn't want anyone else to be around her besides her and that's just stupid and the manga would be so much better without her because she is a trash character. I have very high feelings for this. She needs to go. I hate her. I hate her. She's terrible. It's like Mineta on steroids. It's awful. Still, it's enough slice of life fun to keep it on this list and keep it on the slice of life spectrum. But yeah. I love slice of life animes, people! And I am not afraid to say it! I'm not ashamed! That's literally most of what I watch because I want to feel good and not think too hard when I have a long day at work and depression calls and road rage says things. Like I said in the first part, if you watched all the way to this part. But yeah, I love them. They're just campy and sweet and great. And as far as I know, at the current moment, you can watch most of these uh, shows on Crunchyroll and the others on Netflix and Prime. And no, this is not sponsored. I really wish it was. Also, make sure you guys check out my Etsy to get things you need and things you want. All 3D printed unless you want my keychains or prints. Please make sure you comment below other slice of life that you like and uh, that you think should have been on this list. And whether what other content you want to see next. If you like this list, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. You've been watching Nerdosity and I will see you next time. Bye!